Good week. It's your boy Theo Dorsey right here with you in the uh, city, city place, city place studios here. City place. You got to say this one word is what they tell me. Seacat on the other side of the glass on the ones and twos. We're good in here. We're safe in here. Nowhere near a football field because players are dropping like flies out there. I, I, I hate what we've been seeing um, from the Chiefs left tackle. Mark Andrews tied in for the Ravens. Your, your squad, Seacat, got uh, you know in a car accident actually just trying to get to the field. Scary, man. Um, hate that for him. And then obviously the big news of the day is... The Vikings finding out they will go this year. They will go 2024 without their starting, or excuse me, without their number 10 overall pick, J.J. McCarthy, um, who had a tear in his right meniscus, had a successful surgery today. Again, they always call the surgeries. They always make sure to put that verbiage out there. I'm guessing it comes from his camp, his agent, whatever. A successful surgery on that right knee, but he will have to sit out the full rookie season. Insert Sam Darnold, who is in now year seven in the NFL, um, his third, fourth team, I guess the Jets, the Panthers, the 49ers, now the Vikings, his fourth team, fourth stop, year seven for Sam Darnold, and he'll be the one that'll be delivering balls to Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, uh, TJ Hawkinson, whenever he comes back, uh, handing it off to Aaron Jones, like this is this is the position that the Vikings are in right now, and thank God they have a offensive mastermind in Kevin O'Connell. Uh, but again, terrible, terrible news to hear that a top ten pick as a quarterback. Uh, I believe we see this happens all, all the time in the NBA, right? The, the the Philadelphia Sixers did it time and time again with Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, and we saw uh, Blake Blake Griffin, Chet Holmgren, where these highly drafted rookies end up sitting out their first year due to injury. We don't see that in the NFL at all, especially not with a quarterback. So this is rare ground for Minneapolis. And to touch on that later on, we're going to give you a snippet of the conversation I had with uh, Fox nine and Minneapolis sports anchor and a guy that reports on the Vikings, um, Ahmad Hicks, my guy who you can find on Twitter at Ahmad Hicks TV. He gave us the update on what it's like right now in Minneapolis um, and how they are projecting out with this. Just again, terrible, terrible news. Uh, but it's a Wednesday. We'll have our midweek midterms later on. We also got Evan Cohen jumping in in the house. He's got some explaining to do, though. Mm -hmm. He's got some explaining to do. We got to address him about something that we realized he might have been. Um, I mean, sometimes you, I mean, inspired, theoretically speaking, is inspirational. And we might have inspired him. And he spread that gospel on to uh, the rest of ESPN radio. But see, Kat, we, um, we definitely have a bone to pick with uh, EC today, so we're not going to go easy on him. Anyone else ever call him EC? EC. EC. Oh, what's up, EC? He doesn't really have a nickname. Evco? Evco. Ev that's no. That, I mean, that's his Twitter name, I guess. Mine's Ccat. Ccat Sports is my Twitter name. Ccat's good, though. Ccat's a great nickname. Does anybody tell you that? Like, you have a, a perfect nickname, not just for sports talking, but just in general. Like, have they been calling you Ccat as soon as you, like, came out of the womb? No, I was called Aflac growing up because I ran like a duck. My knees would be close together and my feet would kick oh. outward. So my nickname was Aflac, and I got made fun of pretty heavily for my Little League coaches. Did you give them a little quack, at, at least? Or was it like a thing that came with it? Was it... No, no. I just laughed on the outside and cried on the inside. It was awful. That actually does kind of suck, right? We need to be nicer to the youth. Need nicer to kids like Ccat. He was trying his best out there. Thank you. And 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 as Affleck, what like in what sports was this? Football was this track and field? Baseball, you know, baseball put the ball too. in play, bust it down the line, and all you get is quack quack Affleck oh, running with the knees man. touching together. That, I'm talking to you, Mr. Rivera. Yeah, oh, that's absolutely horrendous. Bullying works though. You you don't run like that anymore. You I straightened don't. out your walk. So I know. Uh, sometimes sometimes things are uh, you know they hurt, but that pain is necessary. The uh, the ups and downs of life is necessary to grow us into who we are. And uh, by the way, yes, yeah, Ecad and I had a great time at Duffy Sports Grill last night. Two for one drinks going and flowing as well as as well as we saw some college football. That's going to spark something we're going to talk about later. We saw a college football game that got me in my feels. Uh, 2008 USC Ohio State battle of top fives in the regular season. And it, it, it got us thinking very nostalgically, but I don't want to get off base here today because I do want to talk Minnesota Vikings. I do have a strong inkling that what we have now, now that there's clarity, at least with the quarterback position in Minnesota is 
it's not for the best at all. You never want to see guys go down with injury. Um, but it does provide a certain level of clarity as to what we can expect for this season. We, people won't be calling for J.J. McCarthy by week four or five if you have a bad Sam Darnold game, which is inevitable. I mean, the, the sample size is big enough. I don't care how much time you spend around Kyle Shanahan. Some of those bad habits aren't going to be eradicated, um, even when you have the kind of targets and weapons and offensive system he'll have in Minneapolis. Um, but I do think this will be a scenario in which at least the Vikings know what they have and, and this injury provides a bit more of clarity. Jordan Addison also going down with the leg injury, a little tough. Um, how about this? Later on, we're going to post the full conversation. We just had a conversation with Ahmad Hicks, again, Fox 9 reporter uh, out of um, Minneapolis. We'll post that full conversation. Uh, here's a little tidbit of it because it, it, it addresses the very fact of what's going on right there with the Vikings. They just paid Justin Jefferson. They're hopeful that this guy, Jordan Addison, is going to be a 1A, like a T. Higgins, Jalen Waddle style 1A to Jordan uh, to Justin Jefferson. And also with Brian Flores coaching up that defense, this is a team that their win total on the Hard Rock bet right now is 7.5. This is a team that can realistically, if they can overcome this really, really tough NFC North division, can expect to maybe win nine, ten games this year. That's not out of the realm of possibility, and that's kind of where I took part of my conversation with Ahmad Hicks. Uh, we'll, we'll toss to it now, just a snippet of it. We'll have the full thing up for you on YouTube today at Theo Speaking. Subscribe and be tapped in. But here it is, uh, Ahmad Hicks addressing first and foremost that seven and a half win total and just how good, just how strong this team can be now that they do have clarity with Sam Darnold expected to start week one. I do. I think they can get eight or nine because of Kevin O'Connell specifically. Last season, this was a team on the verge of making it to the NFL postseason, but they didn't have a quarterback with a strong arm. When Kirk Cousins went down, they had to bring in Josh Dobbs, who barely knew the playbook, and they just weren't going to change their system to fit Josh Dobbs' skill set. So that was kind of just like a one-week trial period where it went well, then it went bad the next couple of weeks. Nick Mullins didn't have the right arm strength. Jaron Hall, who they drafted out of BYU, he does not have spectacular arm strength, where Sam Darnold does. There are throws that he can make where you're just like, wow. And then there are throws that he makes where you're like, Sam, what are you thinking? Like, you've been in the league long enough to know better than that. But like I said, he now can be a little bit more comfortable, Theo. He doesn't have to worry about someone breathing down his neck to take his job. You know, he can deal with the criticism and – he certainly dealt with a lot of lows in his NFL career thus far, so it's about time to have some highs. Now, back to J.J., though. How is he as a dude, right? Like, uh, we know he meditates. We know he's a Zen <laughs> guy. He's 21 years old. He feels right, mature right. past that. Um, but, like, what has he been like in the locker room and around, and how much are the guys kind of uh, attracting to him? Because, again, no matter what happens this year, it feels like, obviously, what the Vikings invested in him. Right. It, that's the future. You know – People love him, and I will say this. You, being a sports reporter, know that, like, sometimes when you go in these locker rooms and you ask athletes these questions, man, they come off as just, like, rude, don't care about you, like, think you're less of a person, where J.J. McCarthy literally uplifts everyone that he's around, teammates, reporters, coaches. Like, we have conversations like we've known each other for five or six years. Like, he just gave me a cell phone number the other day. We're talking about his fiance and how she's having problems at home with the dog and going to the bathroom. And it's like conversations that you typically wouldn't have with another superstar type player or a former first round draft pick. So I think he's a stud both on and off the field. The teammates love him. The coaches love him. Even head coach Kevin O'Connell, you could kind of see it in his press conference today where he was just feeling for J.J. McCarthy and the injury that he had. But what I love most about this, I don't love that he got hurt. But I love that you no longer have to rush him into action like, you know, the fans do nowadays where it's a win for me now. What can you do for me now? Where it's like, all right, Sam Darnold has three bad games. Now they're calling for J.J. McCarthy. If he gets out there and has four bad games, now his mental psyche is messed up for the rest of his NFL career like Zach Wilson. Or he's trying to rectify that. So I think for this, he gets a chance to groom himself as an NFL quarterback be familiar with the verbiage, and then enter this offseason as the sole number one quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings because Sam Darnold is only on a one-year deal. You can find Ahmad Hicks's work at Ahmad Hicks TV. Does some great reporting. One of the smoothest brothers on TV from St. Louis and obviously covers the Vikings. Does Timberwolves work as well out there in Minneapolis. But what he said to me was, was intriguing because I do feel like we're not giving enough credits to Sam Darnold in year, what, age 27, year seven in the NFL under Kevin O'Connell, proving just enough, doing, you know, 
all of the right things to a certain level with that much of a leash because now if he does have a hiccup or two, if he has a bad quarter with a couple pick sixes, there's nobody to turn to. The fans aren't clamoring and the sports talk guys aren't saying put the rook in the game. I do feel like there's a certain level. There's a bar that Sam Darnold can clear that would make the Vikings bring him back for another year. What would that be? What does that look like? How much would Sam Darnold have to do in this year with the Vikings to make the Vikings consider bringing him back and having J.J. McCarthy sit another year? I think if Sam Darnold can take these Vikings to the playoffs, that should be enough to have a J.J. McCarthy at age 22 play through the preseason maybe next year and sit again behind a guy in Sam Darnold who is getting chance after chance after chance. There's something in his tape. There's something in his his presence and the way that he communicates with coaches or front offices or whatnot that keeps getting this guy second chances. And I do think if that's the case, that means that they're going to give him a real shot at becoming maybe the quarterback for the long term. Think Baker Mayfield. Think Geno Smith. We've seen it happen. Reclamation projects. See, Cat, I'm not off base with this. You know, you're not completely off base at all. It's just that how high you draft a guy is kind of discouraging to a, abandon that Trey Lance. four-year plan. If Trey Lance, sure. I uh, I look at the division that they play in, they being the Vikings, and thinking that there is a tall hill to climb. And going forward, your goal, kind of going into these seasons, unless you are the Chiefs, maybe the Ravens, or a team who's been in the AFC, NFC Championship game or Super Bowls in the recent past, your goal is to win the division. Yeah. And you compare your team against other teams in your same division, the Bears got their guy with Caleb Williams. We're probably going to see a great season from him. We can't give you a definitive statement yet. The Packers got their guy with Jordan Love. They paid him like he's their guy. And Jared Goff had one of his career years last year with the Lions. You take those three guys, compare them to your guy, I think you're more confident in the project of J.J. McCarthy than the, you know, the home show, the the animal shelter project of Sam Darnold. That's what I would say. Yeah, because it, it, it does feel like that. It's like, he feels like a rescue dog. He feels like a rescue dog. Uh, what do you think Sam Darnold would have to do? Call into the show on the Baptist Health Hotline, 888-760-3776. 888-760-3776. What would Sam Darnold have to do this year for the Vikings to consider bringing him back and having J.J. McCarthy be his backup? Uh, are you experiencing foot and ankle pain and need to see an expert in the field Baptist Health Orthopedic Care has a team of foot and ankle orthopedic surgeons and specialists who are regarded as leaders in their specialty. Visit baptisthealth.net slash ortho to learn more today. Baptist Health Orthopedic Care combines its resources of experienced physicians and leading edge treatments and technology to provide advanced orthopedic, foot and ankle, joint replacement, spine and sports medicine care. Visit baptisthealth.net slash ortho for more information today. Baptist Health Orthopedic Care has offices conveniently located in Palm Beach County through the Florida Keys. Learn more by visiting baptisthealth.net slash ortho. It feels it feels disingenuous, especially on a day like today, because I do want to give space to say, hey, get well soon to J.J. McCarthy. But also, it also feels a little foolish to say. But what would Sam Darnold have to do to have the Vikings front office and Kevin O'Connell himself rethink maybe bringing him back for another year, and I do think a playoff run could do so. Uh, we got Evan Cohen joining us on, other, on the other side from Unsportsmanlike. We'll ask him that same question as well as uh, uh, just pick his brain. Tom Brady's flirting again. He's fl- flirting publicly again, and from one of the biggest Tom Brady stands, I need to see where he stands on that. That's CCAT. I'm Theo Dorsey. We're theoretically speaking on ESPN 106.3. Live from the 